So my advice to you guys is, is to look at things very carefully. And when I say blow it up, I mean, um, I mean that in many ways, you know, blow it up like destroy it, or blow it up as in put it under the camera and, and look at it, or just look at it a different way. And then very small there it says look closely. So if you can take those metaphoric messages and apply them to your designs, I think you might find some really interesting ways to design. Um, once again, this whole hothouse thing of not lecturing but giving you ideas, I'm not telling you how to design, I'm telling you how to open your eyes and look very carefully. So let's just go through, I've got quite a few of these images and I, I found them pretty amazing. Um, but the, the photographer was David Litschweger and um, he calls them marine microfauna. But I'll just go through them. Th these are the things that appear in a, in a droplet of water. And just look at how strange and amazing these creatures are. They're probably under your foot sometimes. Look at this one, he looks like he has a TV antenna on top of his head. But the, um, the patterns in the designs, and also some of the colors, he, he doesn't add dyes to his subjects. The, the colors that you see here are all natural colors, and a lot of them are actually transparent because they live way deep under the sea. And um, for instance, look at this creature. And it really just gives you, we, we see animals and we see human forms that are very familiar to us, but these come from nature and they are not familiar to us. So that means there's a whole world of nature to explore that we really can't see by going through books, looking on the net, going to exhibitions at the powerhouse might start opening some of these possibilities up. That's a tiny little tadpole, I think. Um, look at the sword on that thing, that's huge, isn't it? Because it's out of proportion, the scale of that um, nose or whatever you want to call it in proportion to the body is way, way out. But that's something, if you look at that in design, scaling things that are out of proportion, you start to create tension. You start to create something that isn't there, I suppose. Look at this. This is eggs. And I'm not sure what sort of fish eggs they are, but it just looks absolutely beautiful to me. Um, I'm quite sure that if you took that and turned it into a fabric of some sort, it would, it would look very fashionable. And people wouldn't know that they're actually walking, out, walking around with little fish eggs on their shirt. But, it looks quite, quite cool. Um, that's a transparent something or other. <laughs> it looks familiar, doesn't it? I can't really can't quite work it out. That looks like a tiny sort of shrimp or something, but it's totally clear. And there's a few of those. This one I really, really love. Look at the face on that. That's some kind of microscopic fish that's just turned out of an egg. But if you look at the eye, to the left of that, it looks like a nose and a mouth. And you guys are probably asking yourselves at this stage, what is Steve showing us? These are pretty weird things. What, how do they relate to my briefs? I'm doing, um, for instance, there's a brief for motorcycle awareness. And I thought to myself, OK, there's an idea in there. And I actually made a, a very quick little ad. Don't judge it, because I only spent a little bit of time on it. But imagine if you said, you know, if, if there were more motorbikes on the road, would you notice? And put something on a motorbike that is totally strange for instance, that, and it would probably get noticed. And that, you know, it's just putting two images together, something very strange, something you've never seen before, onto a motorbike, which you have seen. So it's becoming relevant. Um, here's some more eggs. For some reason, the eggs are just, just absolutely gorgeous. But this um, photographer won, uh, he's, he's been winning a lot of awards, and he photographs for the National Geographic magazine as well. But um, recently, he's won awards for these, these photos. Some of the, um, the clear ones, they have etching on them. If you look at the tube on that, it almost looks like um, some sort of Asian style of, of writing or something. It's very, very strange. Some of them look like other things, like flowers. That looks like a flower. Or it almost looks like an elephant flying backwards or something. It's pretty strange, isn't it? But it really started opening my mind in, in terms of looking at things closely. What, what can you do with these things? Um, there's another clear one. This thing, that is pretty strange, isn't it? So out of the strangest sources can come ideas. Looks like some sort of centipede thing. There's another egg. That's a swordfish, believe it or not. And it's very, very infant stages. So tiny that you wouldn't even see this in the ocean. More eggs. This one is absolutely beautiful. The color in that, I'm not quite sure what it is, but I said to myself, once again, how can I make that relevant to the students? And I thought of the other brief that um, you guys might be working on, which is the Shangri-La Hotel. So I did another quick ad or brochure cover. And I have a woman who's relaxing. And this strange street sea creature is emanating out of her body. 
and I've just copied some of the colors and said it is alive. So I'm just trying to demonstrate how I can get influence from things that are pretty strange and, and pretty different and relate them to, you, to your everyday projects. That one's absolutely beautiful as well. So they, they just go on and on. I think there are about 40 or 50 of them. This one glows in the dark. You can make quite a grid out of that, I would imagine. More eggs. So I, I took this um, a step further and I tried to take it out of the realm of microscopic images as well. And um, on my bus route, there's a, an old cinema in um, Brunswick Street and I pass by it every day and I look at some of the graffiti on it and I think to myself, how many people have not noticed that graffiti? Because I'm trained as a designer, as an art director, to open my eyes and, and look at things. But I, you, know, you wonder if other people look at these things as well in, in quite the same way that I do. Um, this is quite interesting. This is, he took a small net into the ocean and did one scoop and put it under the microscope. And look at how beautiful that is. It looks like a painting. In fact, it looks like a Brett Whiteley painting. I mean, once again, Natalie mentioned Brett Whiteley. That wasn't planned, I, I promise you. Um, but what I did do is I put a Brett Whiteley painting to follow this to show you the, I guess, the, the resemblance between these organic creatures and painting. So this is a Brett Whiteley painting. But to me, it has the same dynamics as a scoop of water. So um, did Brett Whiteley get a microscope and look under it? I doubt it, but he probably opened his eyes and he probably looked around and he saw nature and he saw things happening and he tried to put them into a dynamic painting, which this is. And there's quite a resemblance there. But this, um, this notion of opening your eyes, this, this is the old cinema down in Brunswick Street. It's, they've been restoring it for about three years and they're having problems with uh, the back of the cinema, I think, is falling down, so they're going to have to reconstruct the entire thing. There was a historical um, section to it. So I went along and that's a bigger picture of it. You can't really see much. The only thing you can see over there is a danger sign. If you look just above that car, I was trying to, to cross the street and there was a lot of traffic, so I was becoming a little bit angry. So the first thing I did was I took a photo of the, the danger sign, but I cropped it a little bit. So I, I did what the microscopic scientist did. I just took my camera a little bit closer. And to be honest, it wasn't a very big camera. It was just my camera phone, three megapixels, and turned it into that. Um, I haven't turned it into a project yet. But also, the typical everyday graffiti that you see that was on the building as well. Um, it got a bit fancier, but I really like the graffiti sticker against the wooden background. There's a bit of texture happening. And then um, some of the graffiti on there was, was written. So that's quite poetic, really. I, th I think it's um, somebody is definitely a philosopher here. And this, this is all in that same building that I just showed you. I didn't walk around, it took me one minute. People thought I was crazy going around with the camera. That's, that's another good one there. So um, somebody walked by with a pen, they saw art sale and they added one letter. And all of a sudden, by doing that, it's become something that I'm there photographing. So, you know, a little stroke of the pen can really open up your eyes. Um, kill me. Don't know quite what that means, but you can, you can see my point, but all of this on one little building. The Joker, that's pretty popular. I've seen that a few times. And there was just a piece of paper that was deteriorating that you could probably put a message on. So yeah, the, the point really is open your eyes, look under a microscope if you have to, or just open your eyes a little bit wider and, and see what's going on. Um, so there's where all the bits and pieces are. If you, if you guys ever want to go and investigate it, it's near a, um, a a pretty cool little bar called the Tiki Room. And it's literally, if you've, if you've had a drink at the Tiki Room, you've probably seen this, this cinema many times if, you, if you've done that. So that, that's about it um, from my lecturing point of view. Um, I haven't really got much in the way of housekeeping, but I will do is I'll hang around. I'll um, speak to Natalie quickly, but I'll hang around. And if you guys have any questions either relating to, to this lecture or questions for Natalie or, or just generally, um, you can bring them up to me um, at, at this stage. So um, that's it for today. Well, thanks very much, everyone.